Hello. Uh, this is Rowan. I'm just gonna fiddle around with some watercolors and talk a bit. Um, I mostly just kind of am testing out the idea of doing sigils in a really specific way that I just sort of thought might be fun. So I just did a couple and we're gonna try it out again. So I'm using one of these um, like aqua wash pens that's um, for watercolors and so you can unscrew this and fill this with water which I haven't done this time because I want quite dark colors. Um, I got these in a little set on Amazon. I am using the 01. Um, the 04 is also quite cool. I have it right here. It's like a, uh, a chisel tip. And it could be really pretty for hand lettering, which is what I was playing with it for. Um, I also used it a little bit to get real straight short lines. So that'll be out along with the 01. And I've mostly been using red watercolors. And this no longer makes color, but the bristles of the brush are definitely stained. So I guess that is a thing to think about. Um, I am using a super inexpensive, I think it was like $3 for six of them, watercolors that I got at Fred Meyer, and I have a little on my palette of the red, and then I also have a little on my palette of the blue, which looks like that. Um, these are Royal Langnickel Essentials, it looks like. Um, it also came with a brush, but I, I like the fineness and the length of the bristles on this one better, so we're going to use this. Um, I have just a little bit of red in my palette, and my brush is damp, but I've wiped off all of the excess. Uh, the red that I have been dipping into, I have also picked up blue with, so it's got a little bit of a cool shade mixed in. Um, and I have my little cheat sheet off to the side. So I have already gone through and um, kind of process of elimination some sigils down to real simple forms. So I like to start by always labeling them first. When you're doing this with a brush, it's helpful because it lets you kind of get a feel for how much bend there is and how much color you need. I don't know what it is about red, but most sigils that I draw, I draw in red. I just, it's the color that makes the most sense to me. So. Also, I do not tend to follow the standard practice in terms of how sigils are usually um, created, where you write out the phrase and then you do the like cross things off randomly. Um, well, not randomly, but usually it's uh, like you get rid of all the vowels and then you get rid of the repeated letters and then you look at the shapes of those letters that are left. And I'm, I'm so thankful that that works as a kind of good standard method for people. Um, I've been using both a sigil wheel and just sort of like personal symbolism. Um, often if my sigil starts with an I statement, in this case, like, I am, um, there will be this central, like, keyhole shape kind of thing, which to me is sort of the self, the I am, in this ex example. Um, and then that little self person will usually be doing something 
or be acted upon by shapes. So in this case, um, their little self-person arms are out at their sides, kind of in what I always think of as the like, I am available for a hug pose. I used to have a job where I could not hug my coworkers, and now I have a job where I can, and it is delightful, but I still kind of pr try to practice hug consent, like, you are not obligated ever to hug a Rowan. Um, I also kind of think about the shapes of runes that I accidentally make when I am figuring out how I want these to look. So for instance, there's a pretty clear arrow here. And then I do not shy from modern symbolism. I don't know. It just makes it simple. There are symbols that we already give power and thought and intention. It's kind of like emoji magic it isn't something that I do, but it makes an immense amount of sense to me. How many thousands of times a second is the little red heart emoji sent to someone? Alright, and then I, um, <clears throat> excuse me, I encapsulate my sigils, although I tend to not do it in circles, I tend to do it in squares, and I like to do it so that the, um, color of ink or paint or whatever I am using is just a slightly different shade or is a contrasting shade, it kind of depends. In this case, I'm just going to go with a slightly different shade. And I know, notice that I think I put a lot more squared shapes into sigils than I see a lot of other people do. I don't know why that is, but I really like good square lines. It's sort of funny that I am saying that as I do this with watercolors and like an aqua wash pen. Um, that is sort of the least square straight lines medium one could ask for. Right. And then part of the reason that I enjoy doing this with um, watercolors like this uh, is the little cup that I have over here filled with water is full of moon charged water from the full moon in my birth month which I tend to reserve for things that are all about Rowan. Or things that are all about October, because that's definitely a thing. Um, but I am running, starting to get low, which is sad because it's December, but I've needed, um, needed some magical support recently. Um, but I like to feather in the lines to show the energy of the sigil nice and kind of contained and trapped towards the the figure and not away from it. Um, this line is a little bit not dark enough. There we go. So that is, uh, is how I do that. Now, as always, your mileage may vary and things the way that you practice may be very different, but I think it's good to kind of see how other people's brains tick. It gives you a little bit of space and idea about how things work. Now, in terms of charging and using a sigil done like this, um, I am kind of a fan of washing it all away with water um, because the watercolors bleed in a very aesthetically pleasing way. And if I am sitting and, and kind of holding the thought and intention with me, I find that to be a really simple way. Um, I mean, you can, uh, this is paper, so it is flammable. You could burn it. Um, I have shredded sigils for work in the work uh, 
paper shredder. I feel like that's a good destruction method. Uh, and I encourage you to be thoughtful about not littering and about not bringing harm to the environment or the people around you. Um, but those are choices for you and not for Rowan. So uh, thank you, I guess, for watching. And here is my, my little you know, draw along with me sigil and have a wonderful day.